on. Oh, that sounded like, <laughs> that sounded like <laughs> something, something was, wake up and, and smell the coffee and Sarah and Susie. Delilah After Dark, Deli- that's what I was oh, going for. Oh, Delilah After Dark, that sounds sexier. I freaking love that show. Oh, I don't know what that show is, but I always wanted to be a co-host on Loveline. So oh. Amber Rose got the job, which makes sense. So. Right. This is different. This yeah. is soft rock. Like, oh, totally different. Soothing love stories. Things oh. to make your heart feel nice. Dedication lines? Yeah, big time. Dedication lines are open. <laughs> I'm glad we don't do that. Do you think any of the people who actually have the songs dedicated to them are listening to the radio station? There's zero zero chance. Zero chance, <laughs> zero right. chance that... that uh, uh, oh, let me think the of her Venn name. Diagram. Cindy yeah. in like Minnesota or wherever she is. Uh-huh. I'm trying to think of where she lives. It's more, it's like Missouri. Definitely Midwest. Yeah, Midwest. Yeah. Cindy, who's got a trucker husband who's just on the Riding road. Riding the open road. That they're listening <laughs> to the same station. But then who right. about, maybe, maybe, maybe Mike the trucker loves That's how those smooth bonded. sounds. <laughs> smooth sounds. Maybe he's like, just give me a little Kenny G. And man, I can keep this bus, this truck running. <laughs> Maybe that's it. Delilah. Well, this is Brain Candy and it's episode 401, but I really wish it was Delilah. Oh, well, this song goes out to Mike the Trucker. Yes. This, this, this episode goes out to Mike the Trucker and Claire or uh, whatever her ever, name was. Like, are you ever envious of people, not necessarily truckers, but like um, uh, people that live in like RVs? I get very envious yeah, of them. Yeah, actually, I am. I'm sure you are I right now. That. You keep moving. Yes. You're like, oh I my could save God. myself a lot of time. Yeah, just put all the stuff in there. Keep it there. Keep it there. That would be fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And all my doomsday prep for Corona. Yeah. How's that going? Great. And I am weird. because I, I genuinely love it. I love... Mm, this is... I get it. Because you feel like you're in control well, of something you, you can't the, control. The woman at the grocery store next to me... Or not grocery store next to me. The, she was in the checkout aisle next yeah. to me. Okay. I think she was getting... Feeling a little bit... Um, uh, uh, like, uh, not... I don't know. Maybe ashamed or, or something about... Yeah, self-conscious. Self-conscious. Mm-hmm. Thank you. About everything that she was like ringing up because there were yeah, a lot of cans and all that. She was totally prepping for that <laughs> and she made sure to announce it. She's like, well, got to get my emergency kit all prepped and uh, that's what I'm doing. I went through that this weekend and she's like announcing this. Like yeah. nobody asked her, <laughs> but she's like making sure. And she's probably like my age, maybe a few years older, you know? Well, because you don't want people to think you're... The traditional the, right. doomsday prep. Right. <laughs> or the nouveau. Yes. <laughs> doomsday. doomsday light. Yeah, right. Because you just think, well, I can use these beans. Right. Regardless. And I didn't want to tell her. I'm like, I don't know if your your top ramen's really going to hold up in the, you know. I think top ramen's a good move, Sarah. You what do. do you think you they do. should get? Mm, I feel like the packaging on Top Ramen, because it's just in the... Pl- it's like You I think need Corona something more- <laughs> No, I don't think about <laughs> coronavirus like that. I just think about any sort of accident and the storage. Like, my mind goes to earthquake because yeah, that... Because that's like, normal. That, cause, right. And that, <laughs> to, to dig... Like, what after you dig it out of rubble would still be edible? And I oh, feel wow, like I maybe like the packaging on the Top Ramen... All I know is that I've had bags of top ramen. Uh, I've definitely had that like rogue bag of top ramen in the bottom of my climbing bag for like three years. And didn't survive. There's it's no way. Broke, broke open and like you know gets the little pieces everywhere. Yeah. And so I could just imagine that that's it's probably not. She keeps it. It's probably no big. Listen, deal. it's affordable. Yes, yeah, super I, affordable. Delicious. Delicious. I mean, please. And in just tip pro tip. That freaking Chrissy Teigen is doing the Lord's work with that Cravings cookbook. I saw cookbook. that thing that you posted the other day. It looked freaking amazing. So good. Did you that can come have the from leftovers. Top Ramen? No, but she has a recipe in that book that's Top Ramen, and then she oh. like zhuzhes it. Oh, I love this. Regs. Now I'm on board. Well, for, well, see, this is what... Just buy it regs. You don't need it for... Why are we putting in the disaster kit? Maybe that was my problem with what she was buying. I was like... That you looks like that my tonight. regular cart. <laughs> like, I don't see the problem, lady. Because right. every day is doomsday <laughs> for us. <laughs> and I was like, should I be making announcements about what I'm buying? I'm going to a little kid's birthday party, and that's why I have three cartons of ice cream. I would for real I rather be quarantined. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say, I'd rather be quarantined me. than go to a kid's birthday party. No, that was all ice cream for me. I just nice. tried to make something up. In <laughs> my defense, like it was on sale. Oh. Uh, yeah. 
Hogging by, us? No, uh, 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 the other one that's delicious, Ben and Jerry's. Uh huh. Yep. I the, mean, that better be real on sale. Three for twelve bucks, four dollars piece. Usually, it's five dollars and something cents. That's a nice discount. You know, right. <laughs> that's just good sense. Yeah. Well, and the, right, <laughs> the Hagen Dazs one though. Mm. If you bought five or more, yeah. $2.39 Which I will. And cents a carton. I know I should have gotten all that. I know. She's looking at me like I've made <laughs> a mistake. You. Listen, my decisions that recently have not been. Yeah, but I don't was like, trust Sarah. That's weird that to only have five cartons of ice cream in your refrigerator and nothing else. <laughs> right. You're like a bachelor. <laughs> right. So to be like, oh, we need to call Adult Protective <laughs> Services. She's living you on ice what? cream. I think you should embrace it. Yeah. Because there's not many times in your life where that will be an acceptable Right. I tried do. it on my birthday morning, as I told you, and it only led to a stomach ache in the afternoon. Yeah. So You learned no a valuable go. lesson. Yeah. yeah. I learned that once you're in your mid-30s, which now I can say I feel like I am, Tums is something that needs to be on the... Do you have heartburn? Jesus. Well, sometimes. And like, yeah. God, you are falling yeah. apart. In my... Def- yeah. Oh, my gosh. Is it a certain food that causes this? Um, what if you're like ice cream? <laughs> what if that would be hilarious? No, but the other day it was it was actually I mean, oh, Suze, I'm sorry. So I'll tell everybody here. Susie and I went out after my birthday for uh dinner. Yeah. She took me out, lovely. It was great. But we left Bo here. Oh my god. Which was not so great for Bo. <laughs> I I mean for Bo for, for anybody, Susie. for Susie and Adam. She comes home. Oh god, guys. My dog has left a doo doo <laughs> in the middle of her carpet in my bedroom. Was it? It was not easy to clean. It was. It was. Oh fine. thank God! Yeah, we just I picked it right on up, okay. and then we just scrubbed it the carpet, which would have been no problem. You know, one thing. But then <laughs> Susie sends me the picture that my dog. Who, who I don't know what, what happened. I she only assume you. that your cat was bullying her. <laughs> had had cl- tried to claw her way out of the door and has Into the scratches yeah. on the door. I know. Poor oh my Bobo. God, I'm so sorry, guys. The oh. best part, though, I'm going to post a screen grab of our text because the text that she had sent, Sarah, had sent right before was about the um, an article about the... Dogs peeing yes. in the magnetic field. Yes, how dogs defecate in line defecate. with the, with the <laughs> axis, of like the north-south axis. Oh, yes. my God. And then I go in my bedroom, and there's this huge mound. And then... It's like a practical joke. I said, I guess my bedroom's in the magnetic field or whatever. <laughs> you're, like, you're like, I see. It seems like my bedroom is aligned with the magnetic <laughs> axis. That was something. But oh. I was relieved that it was Bo's because I for real thought it was my cat. And I was like, something is very well, wrong. Because Bo's stressed, and so they're, like, tinier now. Yeah. She, like, goes three times in one outing but yeah three square a day yeah but i'm i'm just so grateful that it was easy to pick up because not six hours later it was you were the victim well she and i were suffering from the same thing (laughs) and i had made Bo like i had gotten a rotisserie chicken and i had used like the the, like and i boiled down all the bones and i like made her like a gravy because she refuses to eat this is ridiculous Bo refuses to eat her food if there's not something mixed in. You made her a gravy? So I, may, I was like, okay, I've got the extra bones. I'll like make it. I don't know. Something about that. Maybe it was too greasy or something. It upset her stomach. <laughs> it was... Explosive. She did the same thing in our house. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. And it was difficult and to clean. Yeah, yeah, it was like, thank God she missed the carpet. But it was that it was like a miracle that she didn't get on the carpet. Wow, this took but a then, real dark uh, turn, yeah, everyone. Then I, uh, <laughs> I had the same problem about 24 hours later, and I was like, oh, my God, I know exactly how Bo feels. I am so sorry. It had been a long time since I'd did, experienced anything like that. Did you eat the gravy? Well, no, but Ren was like, I was like, oh, my God, I am like, I'm in a bad place. Like, I did not get one wink of sleep. Like, oh. I was woken up in the middle of the night with, like, my eyes were like, oh, uh-oh. We gotta go right now. We gotta to go to the bathroom. Danger zone. Danger. And uh, so then the next day, Ren was like, "Oh man!" And I was sitting there. I was like, "Ren, I just don't know. I don't know what I ate." And he's like, "Well, what? What did you have for lunch?" And then I went back in my mind. I was like, "Oh, uh, could be that donor kebab hole in the wall place that I stopped in in the middle of Orange when I like got lost, like was taking side streets to avoid traffic the other day, and uh, it just happened to look good." And, um, you ate that? Yeah, I ate that. What is a donor? A donor. It's like the, it's Mediterranean food or, uh, where they shave off the, I didn't know it was called that. Like they call it 
donor cabal. Yeah, it's like um, why is it called I don't donor? Know. I think though. that's why it, D-O-N-E-R. I'm even pronouncing it wrong, but it's like the sandwich. Like that's where they put it in the sandwich, like the lavash bread. Was it delicious bread. though? It was so good. Uh oh. But I had, reg- I, you know, like I said, not been making a lot of good decisions lately. <laughs> and one of them was eating it. But then the fact that I, and then I went back in my mind and I was like, oh yeah. And then earlier that morning, I definitely was really hungry because I missed breakfast and I was at Ikea and I had a hot dog at Ikea. Oh, he was like, man. Sarah, no Sarah. wonder you would eat like a college, like a frat boy. Yeah. And I'm sitting there going like, they mm, are, do- Ikea why has my food? stomach their meatballs are great it's so good i don't care what anyone says and that hot dog i don't eat hot dogs anywhere but it is delicious yeah and at costco they have that one it's like two bucks yeah, so this good 75 cents oh that is come on I, I, I got 75 cents worth of of you know yeah ooh. you got what you so, paid for you know what episode it, it's not a break candy podcast no, it isn't. episode if we don't talk about you know BM. this is the number one place for your number twos <laughs> I'm writing that down. Oh my god! That'll be my context free highlight that I put on. That's so great. Those are great, one. by the way. <laughs> Anywho, all right. Well, that was my week. How's your week going? I wanted to tell you something that enraged me. That I wanted to know if Ooh, you would be enraged. Yeah. Which is, I called my healthcare provider for uh, to schedule my annual Pap smear. Yeah. And you know how it is with the healthcare, you don't ever like actually call your doctor. You're just talking right. to some random person that yeah. works in the that appointment center. And um, I said, hi, you know, I need to schedule my annual pap smear. And he's like, okay, I'll, you know, do sometimes I think they're faking it with the noise because that sounds like, like nobody types like that. And then he's like, okay, what are your symptoms? I have a vagina. Yeah. Womanhood. I felt like what are you angry and i thought am i overreacting yeah no i would be i understand he's a man and maybe didn't how did you set it up like he calls you said what i said i need to make an appointment for my with my gynecologist for my annual pap smear yeah you shouldn't have said what are your symptoms (laughs) it's like saying i'm getting i'm I'm coming in for a physical what are your symptoms exactly yes i'm alive like currently no symptoms. That's why we do this. It's preventative medicine. But this, this is point. why women, this is just one small example of what mm-hmm. bothers women about the healthcare mm-hmm. profession and how, le- or field, and how they don't know what we need. They don't right. understand what, how our bodies work. Not at all. I genuinely believe that. I mean, in all fairness, we don't seem to understand how a penis works <laughs> so based on yeah, the last but I'm not conversations. in the healthcare field. Correct, correct, correct. <laughs> Totally true. By yeah. the way, we got many follow-ups with people saying they did, in fact, burn their penises okay. with hot peppers. So it, maybe Renz is just like super yeah. protected. But then you know how we talked about like the blue balls thing? Yeah. He says I'm incorrect on that too. Ren? Ren yeah, says that? Well, but, you know, and he says Can other he- males. That, male, that males do feel like pressure from it. We well, need to definitely talk to guys about. I need we a need little to, like, more have information. A male, like we need, we need, like the male voice. I never <laughs> thought I would say that. I need to hear from a male. I don't think I do. Yeah, at least just about their balls, just to like be there to like answer questions. I, I like that. I need answered. That's yeah, it. That's yes. It. And like, what are we talking here? Because the way that they right. pitch the blue balls, it's like painful. Yeah, no, it's not like that. I'm like, it should. It's like they're just horny and they want to. Right, and then you're like, fine. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We're in um, agreement. So tell me, you guys, if you think that I should be mad at that guy, or if I it's think like, I think so. Yeah, because if someone said like, to me, "I need to make an appointment for my prostate exam," I wouldn't be like, "What are your symptoms?" Correct. Yeah. Oh, we should just call and test him and be like, "I need to make an exam." Uh, uh, yeah. They would not say what. No, your they wouldn't. I wonder if that was just like this guy, like kind of like when the you know the taxi cab driver. No, he's he's ass. I was going to say like when you when the taxi cab driver drops you off at the or Uber wherever drops you off at the at the airport and says have a nice flight and you go thanks you too and you go oh crap no, yeah. I didn't mean to say that it's like maybe, one of those maybe it was just a slip up like where he's used to asking that it's right. just his habit what are your symptoms and then but also I feel like don't ask me what my I, I yes. feel like it's weird like don't ask me what my symptoms are because I don't want to tell you I agree it feels like a violation of like my like I don't want to be telling rando guy did I ever tell you about the time that I went into my PCP, a male, for something with my butt, 
And I had to, the hole or for, cheek? Uh, it was the hole. Okay. And he, so I had to freaking take my pants off, of course, mm-hmm. and there was no female nurse Ugh, in the yeah. room, mm-hmm. which to me is not, not good. Right. To, and then he commented and said oh. I had a cute freckle no. on my butt. No, nope. can't do that. <laughs> no, <Nope>. no, <laughs> no. I am not happy. And that no, was because like the comment of you have a cute freckle on your butt means that, that they're taking inventory of other things. Yes. And like, stop. I need, oh, God, Suze, I'm so sorry that he did that. <laughs> That's a violation because now I feel violated and thinking about like like. But what now that you kind of like. like wonder what that freckles like. I thought it's real cute. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what actually is really cute, which is my new Rothies. Yes. Um, I did, but Sarah came in and asked me if I bought new Rothies because I was using the box mm-hmm. to ship something else. But I actually did get a new pair. I bought the black loafer. No, oh. the black. Point? Flat. Oh, flat. Yeah. Yes, yes, and yes. And yes. I need a new ballet flats, and they are beautiful and perfect, yeah, so as great. always. Yeah. Um, and they're great because they're sustainable, and you can throw them in the wash, and that's the main, for me, the main selling point is that these stay You new. want a pair of shoes forever that look brand new? <laughs> there you go. Right. Like, the cost per wear right. is so low yeah. because they last forever, um, and they have always new colors and styles, and then they have kids' shoes as well, which are adorable. Um, really cute patterns and, um, they're comfortable so you can wear them to work or just, you know, fl- I feel like they travel so well I was just going to say, or travel. Like, I feel like you just throw them and mm-hmm. I squish those things in the bottom of my bag <laughs> and they real. I was trying to think about like, they really do look brand new no matter what I do to them. And I have just put them through the ringer. <sighs> Yeah, Yeah. military obstacle course. I'll always go back to that. (laughs) Brand new. You should check out all the amazing shoes. And, oh, they have bags now. Oh. Yes. I actually saw that on Twitter. Oh, cool. Out of the plastic. Really cute bags. A whole collection that just Mm. came out. So that's fun. I wonder if you can wash those babies. I'm sure you can. Yeah. Uh, Anyway, uh, they're available right now. Oh, my God. They're beautiful. Okay. Sorry. Go, go, go. (laughs) Let me start. Again. Yeah. Check out all the amazing shoes and bags available right now at rothys.com slash brain candy. That's rothys.com, uh, R O T H Y S dot com slash brain candy. Comfort, style, and sustainability meet to create your new favorites. Head to rothys.com slash brain candy today. Oh, I'm definitely getting one of those. I love it. I'm obsessed. Cool. <laughs> Sorry, Anyways, I bless just you. Need- <laughs> yes. Okay. Ah, yeah. Let me, let me t- cross that off my list. Oh, uh, did you read about how? Apple, the company, mm-hmm. um, won't, they'll let you use like an iPhone on screen, like in a movie or a TV show, but uh-huh. they will not let the bad guy have an iPhone. Really? So if you're watching like a Who Done It, the person that doesn't Always have an Android. Yeah. <laughs> or like they just don't show their phone at all. Wow. This is really interesting. Villain. Isn't that funny how like product placement can work that way where they'll approve it? You can use their products, but uh-huh. they're still like molding the brand. Yeah, and you know, this one's struck out, like stuck out to me. You know that show you on Netflix? Yeah. I feel like I had a moment where I thought about how it was very obvious that he was using an Apple computer. Yeah. But now I'm like, wait a sec. Do they not see him as the bad guy? Oh, is he like a, so? Like, someone you think is the bad guy? Well, he's murdering people. <laughs> That's usually a sign that you're not the good guy. I don't Look. watch it. I don't know <laughs> right, who we're talking right. That's about. That's totally true. But so this murderer, mm-hmm. you believe you uses know, like Dexter, Apple. yeah, like how he's like a vigilante killer. We're yeah. dealing with something similar to that. Uh-huh. So, like, and that's like the whole thing is is yeah. I wonder in how fact, they decide. It's, it's so great that the the show is so good, but the what, the actor in the show. Um, has has a statement where he said, the show is about what we allow white men to get away with and still like, and that what we, for, what we forgive and what we don't forgive. And, yeah. and he said it so beautifully mm-hmm. where we I was like, damn, mm-hmm. but cause you, so you're like rooting for him, but then also he's like, you're not. Yeah. And so I like in thinking about that, I'm like, wow, that's one where I didn't know rarely where to put him and they were like yeah that's allowed for him i wonder I, i'm wondering too now now i'm like want to go back and be yeah, like, and like what was his computer the when did they... that has to decide whether someone's a right. bad guy or not yeah i wonder how they word it 
But that's so funny to me and interesting. Although the person that was being interviewed was the spoiler alert in case you want to fast forward a bit. Um, he was the showrunner or whatever on um, that movie Knives Out. I oh, guess yeah, 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 yeah. And so... Oh, that was a good th- movie. It gives away that he was the only one that didn't have, like, an Apple product in the movie. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I don't even so remember like, how that So he's like, producers movie. are going to be so mad at me because I'm, like, spoiling it for all the other films. Oh. So watch oh. that. Yeah, right? I see what you're saying. Uh-huh. Like oh, if you're watching that's a movie, good. And you're wondering who did it? Yeah. If and they're you holding not, an Apple I, uh, iPhone, they're they not. Didn't do they it. didn't do it. Oh, this is cool. So you can like be the person that knows before everybody else. Ooh. If you like that. So that's a really cool fact. Thank you, Sarah. Because that's one that like is going to make movie watching and TV watching. I love or those little extra it. things. No, for me, I love stuff like that. It's <clears> like an Easter egg. Speaking of movies, some, one of our Brainiacs sent me um, an article about how you know how the, there's like a board that makes the ratings, uh-huh. whether it's R or oh, whatever. Oh my gosh, they're awful. And she said that that if a man has an orgasm, oh. it can be PG-13, but if a female has an orgasm, it's R. Get out! <laughs> like our desire is seen as more provocative. Which is so crazy because... I was wa- I was watching something else that was talking about the female or or, or like the difference between male and female orgasms and women have the auditory orgasm response, like where we make a noise yeah. and they don't okay. really. I mean, they can, yeah. but it's not like biological where like there's something more to that where like women oh. do it and there's like a, it serves like a, some evolutionary purpose they were talking about. It was like, really? Yeah. What? I can't remember what it is, but I'll have to look deeper into that. Do you but it was always on, make a noise? Even when you're just on your own? Some, yeah, probably like some kind of noise. I mean, I could not make a noise. I right. could try to stop, but like on natural, there's some noise that's coming out of me. <laughs> natural. Yeah. Like, okay. you know, left And up there's to, something to that. Yeah. But and to, to say that a biological, something that we, al- we almost can't control, like, again, I, I can try to control it, mm. but it, like that that deserves an R rating. Whereas, like, and in movies, the guy's, like, making the noise, and it's, like, fake in mm-hmm. a way, because, like, not fake, but you know what I mean. It's, like, they're, yeah. they're, like, up in the ante. We're, like, downplaying it, but ours gets the R rating, and theirs gets the PG-13. Yeah. And like, like, that the, to me is crazy. The examples that they were giving in the article, they used that movie Boys Don't Cry. Yeah. And so when Brandon, I guess <sighs> in the movie, I don't remember this, but I guess Brandon goes down on his girlfriend. Mm-hmm. And then when he comes up, he kind of like wipes his mouth Mm -hmm. and they said, you have to get rid of that. And she was like, but that's what we would, you would do. Like you'd have to wipe. And they were, something about that was too provocative. Oh, cause God forbid that like we talk. Oh, like we have juices. I'm I'm sickened by that. (laughs) I'm now I'm angry. What? Being a woman is a problem. They're like, don't put that away. (laughs) Don't make that noise. Don't show that. You're not allowed to. It's like feels this is just oppression all over, like, yeah. like being controlled. It's like that thing you put in your Insta story that, um, what's that girl's name, lady's name from Sex and the City? She's the, Cynthia Nixon. Oh, yes, Cynthia Nixon. And she narrated that yes. video. Oh, my God. Wasn't that powerful? <clears throat> yeah. Don't be this. Don't be that. Be this. Be that. You're too fat. You're, You're too, too skinny. Fat. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Eat a salad. Why, why are you all using your salad? Eat a hamburger. You need to leave the... I mean, it... Is so real, and you listen to that. I I couldn't even get through the whole thing. Yeah, it was too. And and after listening to three minutes of that and feeling like, oh my god, yes, 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 I know. Like mm-hmm. that is the feeling all the time. And I feel like men should listen to that and watch it and just be like, oh, does that make you feel like that feeling that you get have right now of feeling a little bit like uncomfortable? Like wow, when somebody's like telling you all this all the time, yeah. Yeah, that's how we feel. Yeah, that's how anybody who's oppressed feels. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like just being a woman is problematic and sometimes criminal oh my God. or provocative in a way that it isn't for men. Or get you gets you in tr- like tr- yeah, gets you in trouble. You what does she wear? What don't wear this, don't wear that, don't mm-hmm. look like this. Why do you dress up? Don't wear enough makeup, put on more makeup. Like, yeah, why are you a prude? Why are you a slut? Oh my God, it's so exhausting. <laughs> We're tired over here, you guys. So tired. We just need some top ramen and we'll be yeah. good as new though. Yeah, there you go. I, I, I see too, you'll make it all better. <clears throat> the inequality, however, 
extends to other genres. I was reading about how there's a famous porn actor who is in gay films, mm -hmm. and he is fighting for pay equality for tops and bottoms. Because apparently bottoms are getting the short end of that stick, so to speak. <laughs> I would imagine that they would make more. I sh would think so. For goodness sake. think sakes. about it. They're kind of representing the quote-unquote female I know, but position. So. And don't females usually make more in porn or the males do? Actually, I think females do. I do too. I feel like the one doing the receiving should be I agree. The, yeah. That hurts. He's getting the shaft, as they say. <laughs> He's getting fucked. I mean... Yeah. Yes. So he was saying that he's really angry because, like, he does all the work, and that that anytime you see someone that you think is well endowed, or uh -huh. where you think, oh, they're so buff or masculine, it's usually because of the the work that, that the they're... bottom is doing. That's what he. Oh claimed. my gosh! Wow. I don't really know how that would work, but well, I mean, any way that chance, any time that I can take all the credit for, <laughs> you know. Right. How good my partner looks in that department. I'll do that. I'll be like, well, Ren, you like that? Well, thank me. I do think it's funny, You're though, that welcome. he has to take on this cause. But it makes sense. Yeah. And he's mad about it. I'm not hmm. going to take it anymore. And the bottoms aren't getting paid as much. The bottoms aren't getting paid as much as the and tops. And you know what? Maybe it is because they're of the more feminine, like there's something about. Or maybe there are more. Let's see, bottoms than tops. I just touched my microphone, and it was to kill a bug, and now I have a dead fly on the <laughs> microphone. I was watching him. Yeah. Oh, I, well, on there. I gotta clean him off. It's like Pause it real quick. Okay. <laughs> okay, there we go. Fly free. <laughs> All clean. I had to just. I was like, oh, I've made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm impressed um, that you got it. Those little I, flies it, are just like chilling. The other day there was a bee in my one of my sessions inside. I was like, "How did this bee get inside?" Inside what? Like, in in the room in my office. Oh, inside. No, did you have to windows. chase it around? I had to kill it, and I had to murder a bee. What if it's like of... the bird though? Well, Suze, what if your grandma I tried, is now? But I was like, it was cutting into my session. I was like, <laughs> grandma, bee. get out of here! Yeah, for real. Get the get, come on. It was cutting. It was into cutting your into session. my session. Okay, let me give you. Do you want to hear about a dolphin learning English <gasps> oh, or the gosh. key to happiness? Oh, dolphin so. learning English, which means like maybe my priorities are in the wrong <laughs> place, but okay. I, can to I can totally see this. <clears throat> well, uh, do you remember, I think we talked about this on the show, that there was a lady that jerked off the dolph dolphin. Yes, okay. and had to because, the yes, I remember there was something about, was it that the dolphin was being aggressive so, like it needed to yeah. do that and so she was like well i'll just relieve Fine. it and yeah. then it won't okay i remember this yep so we talked about this story once on the show where this lady was training a dolphin and like he would get aroused and so she would just go ahead and manually mm -hmm. handle it um and that was all we really knew mm -hmm. but then one of our brainiacs <laughs> what are you laughing? i'm just laughing because that 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 sequel to free willy would have been rated pg-13 <laughs> <laughs> good one Right? That's fine. Unless she got off too, in which case, R. Yeah, then it's disgusting. <laughs> okay, continue. <laughs> yeah, as long as she doesn't have an orgasm. All right. So <laughs> um, one of our brainiacs sent me the link to the whole story, oh. which was great because there's so much more to it. And it's about this woman who just had this real interest in knowing whether animals could communicate with mm -hmm. humans or mm -hmm. interspecies communication. And she just went to this dolphin lab on a lark and was like, hey, I just want to see what's going on. And then eventually she ended up training the dolphins because she was so intuitive with them. But they wa she wanted to see if she could teach the dolphin how to speak English. And in so doing, she did have to manually manipulate his desires. But additionally, she freaking taught him English and he learned to say her name, which was Margaret. What? what? <laughs> Well, Out of its blowhole, I think. Oh, my goodness. Like, I think part of it was blowhole and part of it was mouth. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, see, I don't put anything past dolphins because they're geniuses. Right. They're so smart. Yeah. And I feel like 
and how horny. far away is this than J- what Jane Goodall was doing? This is like the same kind of well, like, like sign language yes, when we right. teach them sign language. Totally. And who knows if they know what the word means, right. they can mimic the sound. But, and also, if we ask what is a word yeah, and what is language mm-hmm. anyway... And because this is one of my most, this is one of my favorite games to play. Like what makes a human a human? And, you know, cause you can't say language because mm-hmm. we know that animals have those. So a word is just a symbol. Yes. A vocal symbol that represents an yeah. idea or concept or something. What yes. else? So we understand that there's a relationship between what I'm saying mm-hmm. and what I'm meaning like the word, the noise I'm making and what I mean. Mm -hmm. And that's how we find that pair. So if the dolphin understands a relationship between the sound and the meaning, Mm -hmm. then by our, by that definition of language, they are speaking. Right. They are using symbols to express an idea. A specific thing. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. Totally cool. Now you can get deeper in saying like, okay, then you have to ask, is it, um, the ability to like think into the future or is it the ability to like have a, a thought about a thought or, yeah. you know, though you have to kind of go deeper of like, yeah. I think therefore I am kind of thing mm-hmm. of like all that stuff. Yeah. Because if you just look at, yeah, she, that dolphin was speaking based I on, know. and we know that do, the animals do that between themselves. Right. And we remember when we talked about the, they found out that dolphins and whales were like, uh, shit talking they were like they gossiping, they were gossiping yeah. they were like oh yeah. steve over there uh, he's so real <laughs> he, he, he got a hand job from just, his trainer just, just, <laughs> i was like he thinks he's real cool i just getting jerked off by margaret oh god uh, so good we were really I mean, what's so special about uh, him anyway what is she seeing him? I mean, okay, so he could speak. Oh, like, yeah, smooth skin. <laughs> <laughs> Big blowhole, whatever. <laughs> Big blowhole, God. Oh. I'm dying. One oh. thing I am dying because I love so much is Fiverr. Mm. Did you see how cute that kid I is? I love it. And then I, I it, it would like didn't give me the ability to download it onto my... I'm like, I, need, I want it. How do I get that? I was like, how do I make a video I'm going to send it to yeah, you. Yeah, send it to me. It's so cool. Fiverr is a great service because they have an, an aggregate of all these freelance talented artists who can help you with logos, graphic design, copywriting, um, web programming. They can do film editing, like pretty much That's anything amazing. you can think of. Um, they can handle for you. And I started getting interested in gifts and stuff and stickers for social media because it's fun. And, and it's stuff. cheap. Yeah, it's super affordable. I mean, for goodness sakes, I've spent more on less. <laughs> right. They have 24-7 customer service. Um, and then all the seller or the um, artists and professionals are, you know, rated. Mm-hmm. So they have reviews. So you can see if they're a good fit for you. Take five, check out fiverr.com and you'll receive 10% off your first order by using our code brain candy. It's so easy. Don't waste any more time and get the service you deserve by going to F I V E R R.com code brain candy fiverr. It starts here. So the follow-up of the dolphin thing though, mm-hmm. was that the head trainer was not really interested in what she was capable of teaching the dolphins. And he was more interested in seeing if LSD worked on these guys. That's weird. So she was like, this is ridiculous. Oh, well, we're, po- we're pointing our, the fi- or like shaking our finger at the woman jerking right. them off. Meanwhile, this guy wants to drug them up. Right. For what? So he was like, basically fired Margaret and was like, we're not doing that anymore. We lost our funding. And, um, they moved this, I think his name, the dolphin's name was Peter. They moved Peter to a, that's even funny. I know, it really is. Just realized. <laughs> of course, his name, of course his name Peter. Was Peter. A euphemism for <laughs> wiener. Okay. So they moved Peter to this crappier tank and no windows and anything. And guess what? Peter commits suicide. <gasps> I didn't even know dolphins could do that. Because um, for dolphins, breathing is is voluntary. It's not oh, involuntary. Oh, my God. So he took his last breath, went down to the bottom of the pool, and no, that never came no, back up. No. Man, if this isn't an argument for why you really got to love where you live. <laughs> I mean, shit. Sarah's projecting. Like oh, that. my God. Right. It's so true. The, that can be the end if you're unhappy i so and i wonder what it was for poor peter if it was like 
First the, of all, Margaret was I fired. I th- maybe the losing of the relationship, because I would imagine that that was more... They were bonded. Clearly. Yeah. But no, but like for real, like yeah. joking aside, that that's really sad that I you... Know. Because like you take an animal away from their, you know... Their love. Their, it's really, really sad. Yeah, Peter was despondent, so mm. he gave up, and she said she felt better actually after that because mm. it was worse when he was in that facility. yeah. yeah. Knowing that he'd be miserable. Yeah, I have a friend who worked at um, a long, long, long time ago, years ago, before we knew what we knew, at SeaWorld. And her job was to watch the tanks. Like, she, like, looked over the animals at night. Ah, yeah. And she said it was the worst thing she's ever seen. You've never seen sadder animals. They move them into these small holding tanks. And that she just, it was, she was so anti and was like, these, this is the worst thing for them and i get it (gasps) that's sad yeah i'm super anti keeping those those kind of animals in i am too but i'm also torn we have a lot of people that Mm -hmm. work with animals or um at at zoos Mm -hmm. that listen to the show and i do see yes and there are those situations yeah i see the advantages Mm -hmm. of making it so people can learn about preservation and the circle of life Mm -hmm. and Global and some of those community. animals can't because of the si- other situations they've been rescued from. Yeah. Where it's like they've, are, they've been kept in captivity and they can't be released. Or... And some of them were born in captivity, yeah. which does feel more humane if that's all they ever knew. But yeah. it's still a real problem, and I wish there was a better solution. We need, like, holograms. Yeah. Let them just be out. For real. They do that with the zoos now. Or not the zoos, the circuses now. Oh, right. Remember they, yeah. they were doing all those those ones and at first we were like oh that's kind of weird but then we're like wait maybe that's the more exciting and fun way to explore animals and really yeah safer for everybody at least they're trying different ideas yeah yeah because there is you know a lot of it's so important for kids to learn about animals and all that but oh god if you've ever been to the zoo with a kid or me. It's the word. They're always fucking sleeping. Not the kids, the oh. animals. Oh, the or animals. You. Have uh, I ever? Oh, I've been to an I'm aquarium with you. I'm probably the same at a zoo as a kid. At, at, yeah, I was the same. Remember, you took pictures of me, and you were like, Sarah's exactly like the toddler, <laughs> the kids. Because we were both like leaning over the side. Right. And like putting our hands in things. Yeah. And I was like, I want to touch it too. And it is. Like, it's for fun. Pete's sake. It's fun. It's really fun. It's special, but poor yeah. Peter. Poor R.I.P. Peter. Yeah. I just think there are certain <clears throat> animals. Like there are... You know, when you're when you have an animal that's intelligence level is at that that place and that like I just feel like the more we know, you know. I don't know. Yeah. Oh well. Oh well. Uh I tell you what'll keep you happy though. What? That'll the key to happiness. Yes, this please. Is a, uh one of the classic like no does. Yeah. But uh twenty to thirty minutes of nature a day. Oh. Right? That yes. feeling you're feeling is just what they would prescribe. That like, is relief. It does feel like relief. Yeah. It is amazing the mm-hmm. impact of being outside and in nature and just walking around on grass without your shoes on. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it's like a sensory Yeah, there's something that, about walking around on grass barefoot that, do, that has it like tr- something has the same effect as a lot of um, like drugs that are like mm-hmm. antidepressants and things like that. Yeah. Well, and we do know that, that it is exercise and moving and mm-hmm. then getting out in the world is mm-hmm. a very effective antidepressant but it's difficult because when you're depressed that's the last thing you want to do right. so it's very hard to accomplish that when that's something you don't desire i think it's you know you you have to start by picking one really small thing mm-hmm. and just say it, it, like super, super small. Yeah. Like I was even having this thought about dogs. So like I moved into an apartment now where I have to take my dog out to go to the bathroom. Oh, Before I, I used to just that. open yeah. the door and the dog would go outside and she would let me know. And now I've got to walk, you know, put the leash on and walk around and then get the bag and do the whole thing. And it's like a, a whole thing. I and, am not envious. And so in, in, in having to do this, I realized why therapists say to somebody who maybe isolates, get a dog. you should get a dog yeah. because I've had conversations with my neighbors. I've had to walk her and I've met new people with dogs. I, even she just gets me outside and yeah, the sun it's better is well-being. nice and it is nice. But it's a pain in the it's ass. It's a pain in the ass. But 
it's a pain in the ass when, like, I, you know, I'm f- I'll go outside by myself. But, you know, I, it's good. It's fine. It's whatevs. But uh, <laughs> well, so we'll get used to it. The It'll be more fine. Sarah It'll be fine. says something's good, it's fine, whatevs. It's is not fine. <laughs> I'm like, God, it drives me crazy, actually. <laughs> at least she's not scratching up the doors at my house. <laughs> God. Um, so, yeah, so I see it. And I'm reading this amazing book right now called Chasing the Sun. I'm trying to remember who the author is. Her last name is Gettys. I want to say Kristen Gettys. Um, but it's actually my book club pick this month. And oh. she talks about the importance of sunlight and the importance of our relationship with sun and how we have a special part in our brain that's job is to just, like, recognize that it's sunny outside mm-hmm. and how we are living these indoor worlds where... Right. Our bodies haven't caught up. It has not yeah. caught up. Mm-hmm. And we, even if... Even, like... She says, you think that you're getting sunlight and you think that you're getting light, but when you work in a dimly lit office, it's kind of the same thing how your eyes adjust if you, you know, turn on the light. Like, if it's dark at night, your eyes adjust to the light and Mm -hmm. they think it's lighter than it really is. That those offices are so dimly lit in actuality with the wrong kind of light that it has, like, a worse effect on us and it really does not help at all. And we have to get sunlight for those, like... Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not even saying being in nature. Just be in the sun. Yeah, just for, get outside. Get outside. Just stand outside in the sunlight for 20 to 30 minutes. You when know. it said in the article, like, this doesn't even mean you have to move. No, you, you don't. can just sit. Yes, outside, sit in the sun. And you'll feel better than you would if you hadn't. Yep. And that every single disease that we know in existence has a genetic link to our or is related to our like circadian rhythms mm. and that every single thing it like that you can deliver somebody cancer medication at a different time of the day like after they've you know been up and exposed to sunlight and it will be it will be more effective if you have delivered it when like your cells mm. are awake and all that and we have to work to like kind of wake them up yeah and the world that we're living in of like glued to phones and being in offices and not getting outside and you know like yeah, everything is set up for us to be miserable, correct. basically. Totally. Yeah. And we have to, like, fight against it. And we have to go it's so outside. Hard. It's it so hard. It really is. It's like, that's what I mean of, like, one little tiny thing. Just go sit on a park bench, whatever. <laughs> Did the fly come to you, too? <laughs> it went up my nose. Oh, my God, I saw it. <laughs> Those little buggers. The whole family. We figured out that they're hanging out in our plants. So it's they're, the downside. That, yep, this is the thing about plants. plants. I but know. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that too. I'll be... Because they eat the spiders. It's all fine. I'll just, yeah, live with the bad side because yeah. it's worth it. And once you know that it's from that and not from like, you know, leaving the wine glass out For or something, real. you're like, oh, it's not me, it's the plant. We're fine. I'm yeah. okay with this. Because we do have a lot of plants around here. Yeah, and that is important. That's, That's another true. thing. It's that bringing is. nature indoors. Yeah. And I even talked about that in the book of how like there's this desire for the younger, like this new generation yeah. to bring nature indoors mm-hmm. because we We're understand. It. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because we crave it and yeah. we need it, you know. It's so hard, though. We're spoiled out here because even on the worst days, you can still go out. But in mm. a lot of the country, so there's like four or five months where... Oh, my God, you're so right. Like my sister, she walks around the lake where, where we lived, and uh, she does it every Saturday. And in January and February, she's like, I can't do it anymore. She weighs like 90 pounds. Yeah. It's yeah. just too cold. It's too cold. And so she's sad because she misses it, but it's just not. Yeah. So she got one of those lamps. Yeah. Uh, I forget the name. Seasonal affective disorder yeah. lamps. I don't yeah. know what they're called. Yeah. And she does say it helps. Oh, that's good. Do what you can. You do. You have to do what you can. I'm sure it's not the yeah. same. It's not, unfortunately, because of the different wavelengths, like the different lights that are emitted from the sun, how it's the ultraviolet, red, like the different Mm, frequencies Mm -hmm. like the light frequency do different things to our bodies and some things we don't even know like infrared light they're using in healing and inflammation and all this stuff that's like real important and we don't really know why it does that Mm -hmm. but that you get that effect from being out in the sun Mm because there is the infrared light there right and like we know concentrated versions of it help with a whole bunch of stuff yeah you just do what you can yeah Make the best. Outside. Yeah, just go out for a sec or get a lamp. Yeah. There you go. I, See some nature. I, 
really so bitter. We're like, just do just it, whatever. Do it. Who no, cares? I'm just thinking. I'm like, that's what I. Got. I'm. I'm saying this all with like this sort of like passion because these are things We're that I need to. Yep. That I'm like, Sarah, just go outside and go for a walk in the grass. <laughs> Not a problem. I was thinking about the quarantine that's inevitable. I think you're right. Yeah, it's for sure going to happen. I totally think you're right now. And I was thinking, like, not much would change for me. <laughs> I know. Gosh. Like, and you know what? Same. I could do all my sessions online with my clients. Like, basically, oh, I don't nice. leave my house unless it's to go to dinner or something. Yeah. But I'm always in my zip code. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? That is lovely. Um, yeah, it's fine. But, like, I wouldn't even mind. But that's what the problem is, though, is then you don't go out in nature as much as you should. That's right. But you have some in your backyard. I'm staring at that patch of grass being like, That's yeah, right. That's lovely. Um, so, did you read uh, about... coronavirus free. You know what? I feel like Adam has coronavirus, like a real mild one. Well, when I had my a little emergency tummy situation, I was like... This That's not a symptom. Oh, thank God. Thank God. I was like, don't tell Susie. She'll think she, I won't be allowed to come over. She'll think you're contagious. What is the symptoms? And why do you think Adam has it? Well, he got sick on the way back from New York. Ooh, and um, make me nervous. he has a dry cough. And it's very unusual. And they say that like, it sticks to your lungs like a weird... Because they, they're doing autopsies now on the people. And they can see that it's this weird thick honey like phlegm that sticks to your this. lung <laughs> sarah's got corona i think i have coronavirus <laughs> why you I haven't even coughed i hawk up a lot i think the problem is that you can't get it up yeah you can't hawk it up it's like sticks oh, and then you awful. feel like you're drowning that's what they say that you it's like pneumonia kind of mm-hmm, but worse because <gasps> you think it's not like a cough that's productive it's like you think I feel like I'm being waterboarded. Oh my God, that sounds awful. <laughs> it does. And so Ooh, he's no, been sick that. and he has very unusual symptoms. And I, I said, well, it doesn't matter because he hasn't been out of the country or whatever else that where they'll green light the test. Oh. They're not green lighting all the tests mm-hmm. for people who mm. probably are infected. Yeah. Oh, because they're so. worried about people who are like, like too many. Basically, or and- they're kind of like, well, if you're not dying, we don't have room for you. Dude. No so we're all doomed again. Wow. The theme of the episode. We're doomed. Doomsday. But you know, go take a walk in nature. It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, I'll just send just Adam out for a nice walk. Yeah. Um, okay, last thing I saw that I, because there are subjects that you're really into, subjects yeah. I'm really into, and then there's some that we both love. I think this hits a sweet spot for both of us, mm-hmm. which is that Plymouth Rock, mm-hmm. which is, you know, like a tourist attraction now and everything, was vandalized. And, like, I feel like it's similar to the litter bug thing that you hate. Uh And, like, I like the history of it. Uh So I felt like this is something we could both be pissed about together. Oh, my gosh. You know what's funny is... You're like, I don't give a shit about Plymouth Rock. It's kind of because I feel like what it represents. Oh. Because, like, to me, it kind of is a little bit in that, like... We You're mad at the pilgrims. Yeah. We're what, selling what are you mad a about? story the, the that, Native like, Indian problem. Yeah, like the genocide. The, you know, just kind of a little bit of that. Like that, like that. We are not telling the full story, and that it just feels weird to be like, yes, this. Let's celebrate this place where they came, and then not celebrate any of the people whose lives were just destroyed. Okay, so by you're that. on team graffiti. Ooh, in this case, I'm. Ugh. It's fine. We can have we can No, have because I'm super anti vandalism. Yeah, that's what I thought. I'm super anti vandalism. In fact, I went so far as to report vandalism once when I saw it taking place. <laughs> Come on. I did. I called Who did you call? Nine one one? Um I called the I looked up the non emergency police line. That's very risky. Yeah, because I didn't want to call nine one one. And what were just can you recreate the call? Yeah, so I it was a there I so lived it's right like, by nine one one, what's your non emergency? Correct. Um Hi, yeah, I just want to report, so, and I don't even know who I should call about this, but I was hiking on, you oh know, the God. path, like, by the I beach. I remember this. And I saw somebody spray painting, and mm-hmm. I know that there's been a lot, like, because this was, they were tagging, like, a lot in the area. Yeah, and this, but- this is, like, some kid, he was, like, 14-year-old. Yeah, hooligan. Hooligan with purple spray paint, uh-huh. you know? <laughs> and then the crazy part was they asked me, like, to describe him, and I couldn't 
I can't, like, I have a memory of what he looks like, but it's been pieced together with, like, all of the memories of any vandalism, like, any quote-unquote hooligan I ever saw on TV, you know, uh-huh. where I'm like, oh, I think he was in jean shorts, or were they jeans, or was it this kind of bike, or was he wearing a black sweatshirt, or was it a red sweatshirt, wow. or was it this, and I was like, man, we, those eyewitness reports, we should not listen to a word of them, because it happened five minutes ago, and I couldn't remember. Wow. You know? Wonder if they ever caught that guy. I don't know, probably not. But the, the spray paint was, like, still wet, so I totally knew who did it, and I was like, dude. Did you say something to him? No. I you just judged so. him silently. I was far I was far enough away to have seen it, but he didn't know I saw it. What? Had I been closer, I would have What did you say they were doing it on a tree or a rock? A rock. Yeah, a rock. Yeah. What is the point of that? Not Plymouth Rock, but A Rock. A Rock. Yes. I don't get what is in it. Okay, if you do it on a building and it's like your art, yeah. then people see it and I could see why you want to do that. What is the point of destroying I don't nature? Know. I don't know. I don't know. And I definitely don't like the destruction to the like the land because i remember i went to italy once and there had been a break in time since i had gone before and it was like oh my god what happened Mm -hmm. it was like all of italy got tagged up oh my god and it was like what what happened and you were real sad yeah yeah, and I don't it like just it. felt like like the things that were and i'm like this is do they not even see that this is like these are works of art here and Mm. so yeah i'm definitely not team graffiti i see your point though i didn't really even know that plymouth rock was some sort of attraction like if you told me like when they put googly eyes on all the the you know confederate statues and everything and they like to face those i'm like go ahead i'm fine with that fine with that and you see this as the same kind of yeah okay i see it a little different because worshiping people is weird to me yeah um but yeah, I can see your point. But don't fucking spray no. paint it. Don't. All right. Or it's yeah. kind of at a neutral point. Yes. I mean, we, I to, I definitely agree with you on like don't spray. I'm anti that all the time. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Could have put googly eyes think... on it. That would have been funnier. <laughs> right. Pet rock. That well, would have been funny. That you reminded me when you were talking about how you had to call and basically ask for a manager. <laughs> Um, we had a brainiac, let me find it. She messaged us with a question Mm -hmm. about like what we think about something that goes on. Let me find the, hold on, I'll pause it. All right. Her name is, I think, well, E, I don't know her name. Um, and she said, brain candy topic idea, the Karen insult. I was on board at first when, you know, when people say like, okay, Karen, Uh about like uh Karen and human resources or whoever's like being annoying. It's like our Linda. Yeah, it's like Linda. Got it. Uh, She said, I was on board at first when it was a response to women being disrespectful or calling 911 on people of color for Mm -hmm. no justifiable reason. But I feel like it has turned into an insult for any adult woman sticking up for herself or not being Mm -hmm. polite. Mm -hmm. It's sort of infuriating to me that now I think twice about sticking up for myself in public, fear of being exposed or labeled as a Karen. Mm -hmm. Men don't have this issue. I'm just curious. I think that's a really good point. I think it's a great point. And I do think she's right that it's now extended. Because I, I feel like that. I And I even call myself in those moments. I'm like, oh, I don't want to be the white lady calling the manager right now. <laughs> and I'm essentially right. like labeling myself. I didn't know there was a name for it. But I'm saying I don't want to be a Karen right now. Right. And have definitely experienced that. And I can see how it got extended to just like any woman that makes a fuss, regardless of whether she's justified mm-hmm. or not. <gasps> like, did I tell you about the incident at PetSmart? Well, you told me they didn't do I, did their I job. Did I tell it on here? No. Okay, I've not told this on here, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. Yeah. Um, so I took my dog into PetSmart and, um, to go get groomed and dropped her, her off at 10 o'clock in the morning. I didn't get a phone call or anything. It's 3.15 in the afternoon, so I go to pick her up. I'm assuming it's been a long time. It's been five and a half hours, five, almost five yeah. and a half hours. I go to pick her up and they ring me up and everything. And then, cause I got to like get rung up and then show my like receipt and then they let the dog go. And I go to like pet her and I'm like, Oh my gosh, she's covered in hair. Like she, what the heck did you guys do the, you know, cause I get this like shedding, de-shedding kind of service. It's like, it is the season. And, uh, they're like, Oh, Oh, we must have not. Let me just look that up real quick. They go to look it up. And I'm like, wait a sec. And her nails are still long. Like did anything, they tell me 
they totally forgot to take care of her, that they didn't do anything. She hadn't had a single service done. And not only that, but they had forgotten about her and kept her in the kennel, in that little crate, for five and five a half, and hours. half hours. Right. With no bathroom. No potty time. No nothing. Yeah. And I was, we were, I went in a U-Haul. I have all the stuff, like I, I got her this groomed. This is a bad week. This is the worst week. <laughs> I got her all groomed, so then like we pick her up. We, she, you know, we're like loading up the truck while she's the groomer. We pick her up. I, she comes and sits in the front seat with me, all nice and clean. And she comes in the new house and everything's fine and no hair anywhere. Nope, not the situation at all. And I, in that moment, was like, I don't, I had that thought of like, I'm going to be the lady who's like, I'm going to need to speak to your manager right yeah. now. And I hated doing that. And even thought, though, like, even talk though about I'm justified. so correct for this, mm-hmm. so right. And they're like, oh, well, we'll give you a refund. I'm like, a refund? You should give me like 10 new baths. We'll give you a baths. refund for the thing we never did for right. you. Right. I'm like, well, I certainly hope so. <laughs> and I just didn't have the energy to like argue it then. But there was definitely that feeling yeah. of, I don't want to be this, that person. But, you know, Ren's great because he's like, oh, no, 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 no. we yeah. are calling. I'll do it. He's like, yeah. let me, you know. And it's it's sometimes, you know, it's weird that, like, you know, I need a guy or, like, I need somebody else to kind of be like, no, no, you can push this. This is an this is something that, you know, is valid. Is valid. Yeah, that sucks. But and, it's because you're forced to doubt yourself, though. If yeah. everybody's saying this type of person sucks, mm-hmm. you don't want to be that type of person. Mm-hmm. Right. But in this case... Ren's really good at doing it well. I'm sure. He's really good at... Like, make, he still seems nice, yep. but he's assertive. Yeah. Yeah. Like... What would you say you are? Desperate and, and, and <laughs> just, like, a hot mess. Like, like just, like... like Chaotic? Chaotic. Or? Like, more sad. Oh, more like... And, your and feelings are hurt. My feelings are hurt. It's yeah. awful. My feelings are... More like... Like, yeah... I, I I want, I'm not even looking for like justice. I'm just looking for like understanding. Someone to be like, I get what Someone you're saying. Someone to be like, yeah, that would suck. Yeah. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Like that, I'm like, that, yeah, that's all I want. Thanks. <laughs> right. Know? Just an apology goes a long like, way. That's it. But yeah, I definitely see that fear. And I think that's a really good point. Yes. That, that woman made of, of maybe it's like. You know, and to hold your ground and be able yes, to say, you be know, confident. I understand. And I think maybe if we work on the delivery mm-hmm. that, you know, because then there, there's always that like trying to make a scene that. Woman. Yeah, I think if you're self-aware enough to even be asking the question, I'm sure Correct. that you would be the kind of person that would be discerning. Correct. Yeah. I totally agree with that. So you're the person that should speak up. Yep. And all these other Karens can yes. suck it. Yes, but I have recently been overhearing and even thought myself of what you say about anybody complaining about soup or food and how it's always ice, ice cold. cold. <laughs> I myself have, I, well, Red and I sent food back a little while ago because we got it and no joke, I was like, okay, but this is ice but cold. But it wasn't though. It was, <laughs> it was it just was like room, temperature. room temperature cold. But I, like, even he doubled down and was like, ice cold you know like said it with more you know it was like let me feel oh my god ice and it was something that should definitely be war like that was when we were in laguna beach and got that whole meal for free too again i'm telling you (laughs) maybe you are karen (laughs) totally not that's funny though because i had told sarah when you're a server and someone's upset about their food they always hype make it hyperbole where it's like ice cold when it's really just probably lukewarm it was totally lukewarm (laughs) Yeah. But the point remains. Yes. All right, people, we're out of here. All right. Love bye. you.